Hey guys, this is B Communications, and welcome to a brand new unboxing slash Blu-ray VHS DVD update all-in-one video. Uh, wasn't planning on doing one of these so soon, but I got another package from a good friend of mine, Matt Rambaraf for Life. Sent me a package in the mail, and um, I thought, why not do an unboxing video? And um, so without further ado, I'm going to start unboxing this. I opened up a little bit of it. Because, actually, my camera fucked up, and it's doing it again. It was doing that fucking stupid blurry shit. So please do not do that again. So, anyway, um, I want to say thank you to my friend Matt, Rambo for Life. Thanks, Matt, for this gift. You didn't have to. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being, you know, such a wonderful fan friend. I couldn't ask for a better friend in the whole wide world. And, oh, man... Dude, that's fucking awesome. You didn't... That's really cool, bro. So, it's, you made a copy, I believe. It looks like there's a copy. Or, or oh, this is the double we had of, of Spider-Man Unlimited, the series. Which I guess is on one disc. There's like one disc here. But, um, unless there was a missing disc. Because all I see is one disc in here. He'll probably know more than me, but Spider-Man Unlimited, the uh, complete series. I haven't seen this show in forever. I remember watching like the first two episodes, and then I don't remember much after that. I know that this is a series that ended on a cliffhanger, so people were fans of it. They never got to see the end. Um, so that's really cool. Um, I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on the 94 uh, animated series of Spider-Man, Spider-Man the Animated Series, because I have a DVD of it. Uh, in Oklahoma, but I don't have it right now because it's storage. But this is cool, though. This will go well with my Spider-Man uh, live-action TV series and so forth. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for the Spider-Man Unlimited series um, DVD-R. It's really cool. And um, now, now I can finally see this movie. Um, case is kind of busted. Like like the the disc the disc is fine though. But, um, the case is kind of broken, but the disc is cool. The, the, the disc is fine, and the movie I'm talking about is The Shaft. Um, would you stop with the blurry bullshit? Come on! The Shaft, remake of The Lift by Dick Moss, which I saw a trailer for. It looked like a lot of fun. I've seen Matt's review. It looked like a lot of fun. So, I'm really glad to get my hands on this so definitely give this a look sometime thanks Matt thanks for sending me the shaft now I can you know live in an elevator ooh Def Spa that's really cool thanks man Def Spa so I could finally see this movie I, I, re I made fun of this movie a lot it was like an in-joke because I know the alternate title is Witch Bitch so I'm like Death Spa, aka Witch Bitch. Like, what a joke that would be. Until I saw the trailer on the Terror Trailers commentary, and I was like, you know, that looks like that might be fun, actually. So, thanks. I'll definitely give this a look sometime. Thanks for Death Spa on DVD. And, um, a few more stuff. Oh, the Dream Team. Cool. Cool. I do already have the Dream Team on DVD, but, um, this would be a nice, uh, I'll keep it. It's a gift and it's a backup. So I have a backup of the Dream Team in case something happens to my DVD. So thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, some more stuff here. It's pretty cool. Oh, It Waits. I actually have been curious about this movie, to be honest. It Waits. Um, I think it's an Anchor Bay original movie. Thanks, to Matt. Thank you, Matt, for sending me It, it Waits. I'll give this a look sometime. It looks like it has some decent creature effects. Um, I've been kind of, I've been curious about this movie anyway, so thanks. Um. <laughs> Ghoulies 4! <laughs> I do have Ghoulies 1 and 2 on DVD. I also have Ghoulies 3, because I have the pack, the, the multi-pack that has all the, that has Ghoulies 3 in it. So now I have all the Ghoulies movies on DVD. Thanks, Matt. So, uh, really, seriously, thanks. Now I have them all on DVD, so I can get rid of my VHS of that. Corn? What the fuck is this? 
some PG-13 movie called Corn. What the fuck is Corn? I don't know what the fuck this Corn. Well, I guess I'll find that out someday. Corn. Dark Wolf. <laughs> Fucking Dark Wolf. Thank you, Matt, for Dark Wolf. <laughs> A dumbass movie, but it's just thanks. No, I'm done. It's all right. Oh, cool. Uh, so he sent me the DVD R's of Minefield and Blast. So I can give those a look. I do have Blast on VHS. Blast is a movie with Lyndon Ashby. Minefield, Michael Ironside. I was curious about it. It didn't sound like much at all, but. Um, but yeah, thanks, man. This is a really good amount of... This is really cool. Thanks, man. There's a lot of um, cool uh, flicks here. Anyway, thank you for the... Thanks for all these uh, DVDs, Matt. Appreciate it. Thanks for being a good friend. Um, probably saw an awkward edit there. Um, I had to cut some footage out. I interrupted. Anyway, here's another package I got in the mail. I think I know what this is. So, yeah. From overseas, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. Um, this is the Blu-ray from Aero Video. Yeah, I know, it sucks for people who don't have a region free, free Blu-ray player. Because, you know, this is the only way you can see the film in widescreen and uh, the way it's, it was originally intended and also has a lot of features on it. So it's like the ultimate, you know, Blu-ray for fans of Remo Williams. So people like my friend Matt, you know, can't, there's no point in buying it because it'd just be a fucking paperweight. So I can still be mad even though I do have it now and I can watch it. And I can enjoy the features and enjoy the film, which I do enjoy. I do really do enjoy Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. Well, you know, but um, it's still bullshit that people who don't have a region free Blu ray player can't enjoy the film because they, because of stupid region locking, which is re retarded. But anyway, um, I'll open it, I'll open the case. And um, take the take the Blu-ray out of the plastic because I'm not going to keep it in mint condition. Oh my good, mint condition! I have my Blu-ray of uh, Remo Williams is unopened. Bullshit! This isn't an action figure. We don't need to start carding fucking Blu-rays. I hope we do not get to that point where we're starting to card Blu-rays like they're comic books or action figures. That would be a sad, sad, sad day. So, yeah, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. It's actually pretty quick shipping from overseas. Took a week or, or, or two or whatever. This cover art's okay. It's okay. But I'm glad they have the original cover art that I can flip because the original cover art's so much better. So, I'm flipping it. Nothing against the, the the new cover art. It's okay, but I definitely prefer the original poster cover art for the film, and I like that. Arrow Video is pretty much like Scream Factory or Shout Factory, but overseas. It's the UK's version of Sh Shout Factory, pretty much. Even some of Shout Factory's titles, Arrow Video has released, like um, like for example, um. Phantom of the Paradise, which I'm also waiting for. That was released by Arrow Video, but it didn't have as many features as this Shout Factory release. But anyway, uh, Screen Factory release. But anyway, flipped it to the original cover art, because that's so much better looking. Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. This is what it looks like on the end here, and here on the back. Um, it's a high-definition Blu-ray presentation of the film from a digital transfer prepared by MGM Studios. Um, it also has an isolated music and effects soundtrack. It has an audio commentary producers Larry Spiegel and Judy Goldstein, Remo, Rambo, Regan, and the Reds, 
the 80s action movie Explosion, an all-new all new feature-length documentary from High Rising Productions, focusing on a decade of cinematic destruction and Remo Williams' place among the carnage. It includes new interviews with genre expert Bay Logan, Remo producers Larry Spiegel and Judy Goldstein, celebrator director Sam Furstenberg from American Ninja and Mark L. Lester, who directed Commando, producers Don Borchers, who produced a Angel, and Garrick Dion, who produced Drive. And uh, filmmaker and uh, scholar Howard S. Berger and Professor Susan Jeffords, author of Hard Bodies, Hollywood Masculinity, and the Reagan Era. And then you have When East Meets West, When East Meet Met West, Joel Gray reflects on his turn as twin. Changing Faces makeup expert Carl Fulton, Ful Fullerton discusses his Oscar nominated work on what Remo Williams' adventure begins. Notes for a Nobleman, composer Greg Safan talks about the, his classic score, theatrical trailer, reversible sleeve, blah, 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 and this collectible booklet. This is what the actual Blu-ray looks like of Remo Williams' The Adventure Begins. And um, then you have this uh, booklet. And it has like cool full color photographs and poster art. That's pretty much talking about the a little bit of behind the scenes of the movie and so forth. See, having this is kind of bittersweet. It really is. The best way to describe the having this is bittersweet. Same kind of way I felt about, you know, Streets of Fire. Is It's bittersweet because the rest of my friends, you know, Matt and Effrey especially, they really enjoy this movie, but they don't have a, a region-free Blu-ray player, so they can't even, so they can't enjoy this. So they can't even buy this, or, or they could, but it wouldn't be, they would, it would be completely useless. That's why it's bittersweet, because, hey, I can enjoy it, but my friends can't, because of the bullshit region locking, which is stupid. But anyway, I'm still glad to have Remo Williams on Blu-ray, with the features and the best transfer of the film uh, available to date. Just hope MGM gets up their ass and maybe it lets Shout Factory release it in the, in the U.S. That would be nice. That would be a good thing for fans of Remo so they can get their hands on it as well, the Blu-ray. And speaking of other Blu-rays by MGM, here's the Blu-ray of I Come in Peace. Um, I changed the cover art because originally it said Dark Angel, but I switched it to so it's I Come in Peace because I think that's a better title. And I um, paid this up because it was really cheap. It was like eight bucks, and it's it's now I have I come in peace on Blu-ray. I can replace the DVD that I have of it from MGM whatever MGM archive or whatever. This is the DVD from Screen Factory, which has interviews of director director Craig R. Baxley and actors Dolph Lundgren and Brian Brendan. The actual trailer, best transfer of the film, available. So I had the film on Laserdisc and Blu-ray, and I might keep the DVD. I don't know yet. I'm I'm gonna figure some out. But I'm glad to have this on Blu-ray. I come in peace. I heard the features aren't much, but it's better than nothing. So really do enjoy this movie, so I'm glad to have it on Blu-ray. I come in peace. You go in pieces, asshole. <laughs> so there's that, and there's another movie I've wanted to add to my collection, which I'm glad I was able to. The DVD of Firstborn. Uh, this is an all of films release. Good quality DVD, though. Best transfer of the film, and only uh, only way I had the film before is on VHS. Very underrated drama, uh, d directed by Michael Apted and starring uh, Peter Weller, Christopher Collette. Uh, uh, Corey Haim also has a bit role in it. Really like this movie. I think it's a really great flick. Uh, one of the most underrated dramas in the 1980s. Um, I will definitely be reviewing this again sometime. Firstborn. Then here are the, so that's the DVD, I'll save the, I'll actually save those VHS for the last, actually. Um, more DVDs I picked up recently, Book of Blood, 
Uh, mainly I got it, it was three bucks, really cheap, and it's directed by John Harrison, who I liked, John Harrison. John Harrison directed Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, and he also uh, directed a few, a, a, a few, a really a big handful of episodes of Tales from the Dark Side, the series. So, I like John Harrison, so I'm curious to see what his take on this is. The idea, I think, is kind of interesting, too. The acting, though, on the trailer I saw, doesn't really look that great. But it has some decent reviews, and I'll give this a look sometime. Book of Blood. Finally got this on DVD, a movie that I saw years ago and I really enjoyed, a film called A Civil Action. I haven't seen it long since then, but I remember it being really good, and I've always been wanting to revisit it. And I only had it on a VHS before, but now I have it on DVD. John Travolta movie, which I barely nobody talks about this flick. Um, I'd probably say it's one of the best uh, lawyer dramas I've seen, justice dramas I've seen. And I, I haven't seen it since I saw it a long time ago, but I remember it being so, so compelling. It's so well acted and well made and excellent. And I'm really looking forward to giving this another look sometime. A civil action. Justice has its price. Glad to get this two disc finally of iRobot, the all access collector's edition. iRobot is a film I saw in the theater when it came out and I really enjoyed it. I think this is one of Will Smith's more underrated films. I really enjoy this movie. I don't think it's, I think it's actually, I think it's a really exciting, fun, entertaining, uh, thrilling adaptation of Isaac Asimov's story. Is it entirely accurate? No, it isn't. It adds, it, it adds its own special flavor to it. and doesn't mean it did the wrong thing or it's bad because of it. I think, you know, I look forward to revisiting this as well because I really enjoyed it when I saw it in the theater. And I'm glad to finally have it in widescreen and with features because for the longest time, only way I had this movie is in full screen on DVD. So I'm glad to have that at Robot Special Edition. Olympus Has Fallen on DVD. I got it because it was five bucks pretty good deal and um, I liked the movie that was a pretty good flick saw in the I uh, didn't yeah I saw in the theater actually I saw in the theater I enjoyed myself so give this another look sometime as well as give White House Down a look sometime but I remember this being a pretty decent flick um, one of the better f movies of uh, 2013 Olympus Has Fallen here's a film that I have a lot. I had a lot of fun with it as a kid. I grew up watching this movie on Disney Channel, Sky High, and I, I've always been wanting to add this to my collection because I just I, I enjoy this movie. I actually caught it again on on Disney Channel a while back, and I still enjoyed it. It's it's what I, I could say. I think it's one of Disney's most underrated flicks. Nobody talks about Sky High. How many people talk about Sky High when they talk about Disney? Barely nobody. I found it to be really fun, clever, entertaining family for you know family flick but I thought it was a really cool idea I thought it was fun I thought it had a nice heart to it and um, yeah I haven't seen Sky High in a long time I saw it like what like a year ago when it reran at Disney Channel but I look forward to revisiting this too because I, I always remember enjoying this film Sky High and I almost feel like I'm the only one because I never hear anybody talking about that flick um, picked a movie called The Angel of Death this is a film with Mira Servino and Oliver Martinez. I got it because I saw the trailer. It looked like it might be interesting. And um, definitely give this a look sometime because it's a film that sparked my curiosity. Got this because it was like two bucks. Noobs. Mainly it's a video game comedy. I think I might do a, a double feature with this and Fanboys. And um, I mean I have a feel I'll definitely like The Wizard a lot more than Noobs. But um as you can see, that's the type of movie it is. It's probably a piece of shit. But I'm I'm curious about it, though. I am, because of the whole video game competition angle. Um, here we have Kick-Ass 2, which I still haven't seen yet. That's surprising, right? Me, big fan of Kick-Ass, loved the first film, saw it in the theater, really enjoyed it, and I haven't seen the sequel yet. Mainly because I heard some bad things about it from some of my friends, I heard it was underwhelming, I heard it wasn't that great, and so I didn't really bother, and I think it was a point in time where I didn't have money to go see in the theater, 
So, um, but now I have it on DVD, and I will definitely give this a look sometime. I'll revisit the first film, and I'll give this a watch. So, kick ass two. Then, uh, these, uh, two Steve Martin films that I enjoy. Um, The Jerk. I want to revisit that one. And a special edition, which I never even knew existed, of Parenthood, which I really do enjoy this film. This is one of my favorite Steve Martin movies. And this is this cover art is horrible. Steve Martin looks absolutely terrifying on this cover. Some really shitty Photoshop. Um, this has a couple features on it. Uh, art imitating live, Academy Award winning director Ron Howard takes you behind the scenes as he and the crew reminisce about how their own lives affected the film. And then Family Reunion, casting director Jane Jenkins shares a personal onset stories about an incredible ensemble of actors. And I think for the longest time, too, it wasn't even in widescreen. It was like full screen release or some crap. The Universal was pulling again. I don't remember exactly. But I always remember really enjoying this movie. I like Parenthood. And um, a movie I've been curious about checking out called Running on Empty with the River Phoenix and uh, Judd Hirsch. Uh, the plot itself is what what uh, made me curious about it. After anti-war activists Annie and Arthur Pope, Christine Lottie, and Judd Hirsch blew up a napalm lab in 1971, they became lifelong fugitives. They and their children have stayed just one step ahead of the law, running from state to state, job to job, and identity to identity. But now elder son Danny, played by River Phoenix, wants to stop running from, his pa from a past not his. And to do so, we might never see his On the Lamb family again. It's also directed by Cindy Lou May, who's a really talented director. And yeah, the idea of a family on the run for some kind of bullshit charge is... And this might be interesting drama. So, Running on Empty. And then I got... These I actually got a while back. I forgot to show them in the video. These from Goodwill, actually. The Hunting in Connecticut. Um... I know it's PG-13, but I'm curious about it because I remember the trailer using doing a really it used the score from Wait Until Dark and did a really good job with it. And and I you know I like you know Kyle oh Kyle Gallner's in it the guy from the Nightmare on Elm Street remake um, Elias Cotillas. Um, I thought it, yeah Virginia Madsen Virginia Madsen is in this and. Um, I don't know, it looked like it might be a decent PG-13 ghost story, so I'll give that a look sometime. And then maybe watch Hunting in Connecticut 2, Ghost of Georgia. <laughs> Fucking that Ghost of Georgia. And uh, American Hunting. Curious about this one, too. I know, I've, I've never seen it before. I know it's got Donald Sutherland in it. So, an American Haunting. Both movies that are supposedly based on a true story from Lionsgate. They have haunting in the title. And then, this is a good deal. Three bucks for the special edition of The Abyss. The two disc special edition of The Abyss, which is one of my all-time favorite films. I love The Abyss. I've always loved The Abyss. I love both versions. I love the theatrical version. I love the special edition. To be honest, I'd probably say I like the special edition a little bit more because it explains a little bit more things. I think this is one of James Cameron's most underrated films. Um, I think this kicks the shit out of Avatar. I think this kicks the shit out of Titanic. Is it better than Terminator? I think it's on par with the Terminator, for me personally. And um, I think it's on par with T2. I'd probably say I like this more than T2. I know. Shocker. Whoa. I'd probably say I like this more than True Lies. And the only uh, James Cameron movie I'd probably say that I'd like a little bit more than The Abyss would be Aliens. So yeah, you heard it. The Abyss is my second favorite James Cameron movie. This is one of the first James Cameron movies I saw when I was a kid. I really enjoyed it. I was really sucked in by this amazing world that he created with this amazing special effects. That is something that's there absolutely spectacular. Um, I would love this. This deserves a Blu-ray. Why the hell is this not on Blu-ray yet? This deserves a steel book, whatever Blu-ray, two-disc Blu-ray special edition with new interviews of the cast, a deleted scenes, whatever, and. Um, all the features that are on this, which are good. I mean, the 60-minute documentary, Under Pressure, Making the Abyss, is really a great documentary. I think it's a really wonderful documentary. The one, and yes, it's not in um, the right aspect ratio, which is one of the problems with the, with the Abyss on DVD. But 
If you're going to get a DVD of The Abyss, get this to be a special edition. Don't get the single disc, because all you get is the theatrical version and the special edition, and you don't get the documentary. And trust me, if you like what you saw in The Abyss, and you want to know how they did the effects, you want to see the 60-minute documentary under pressure. And even if you didn't really care for the movie, I still think you might find the 60-minute documentary fascinating. Because I know people who didn't even like the movie who liked the documentary. It's a very, really fascinating story. James Cameron and the company and all those guys behind the abyss, they, they rented a, um, a, a they they rented an abandoned, it was like a nuclear power, like a nuclear power plant sort of, you know, thing to set up. The, they actually filmed all these shots underwater. It was, I can't really do it justice. You know, you got to see the documentary sometime. But anyway, yeah, I really love the abyss. Um, I'll probably review this sometime soon. I meant to a while back, but I didn't get around to it. And I really do want to get around to it, though, because I really do really love this movie. I love The Abyss. So, yeah, it's Abyss Special Edition. That's what, and then, actually, I have a couple of VHS I want to show you, and that'll be it. Um, this is 50 Cent's Arizona Dream. Never heard of this movie. Johnny Depp, Jerry Lewis, and Faye Dunaway. A very early Johnny Depp role... It was in the early 90s, Arizona Dream. Give it a look sometime, I mean, be interesting. And then I got these, because it was six bucks for all four of them. And yeah, I'm still surprised that there's four of these movies anyway. Um, I'm surprised this even got a franchise. Relentless, with Judd Nelson and Robert Loja, and uh, Leo Rossi, directed by William Lustig. Relentless 2. Dead On, <laughs> there was a sequel uh, with uh, starring Miles O'Keefe, Leo Rossi comes back as well Ray Sharkey, Meg Foster's also in this one, and they're not done yet because there is still another sequel, Relentless 3, starring Leo Rossi and William Forsyth, who looks exactly like his character from Raising Arizona. Relentless 3, you're like, th really? 3? And then, last but not least, Relentless 4. Yeah, there's four Relentless movies. Yeah, who would have thought that this would be a franchise? Relentless. Four. Four Relentless movies. So, now I have all four, and I'll give them a look sometime. All four Relentless movies. I mean, I guess, I guess really it was relentless, because there's four of them. <laughs> Didn't stop after one. But anyway, um, thanks for watching this quick uh, uh, DVD, VHS, Blu-ray unboxing video. And I will see you guys later. See ya.